everybody. Welcome to this week's Decision Desk 2022 election forecasting model update, our last for this midterm. I'm Dr. Liberty Vittert, professor of data science. So let's dive into this week's last model and all of the crazy changes we've seen this week and in the past couple weeks. There's one pretty darn big one to wrap things up. It's been four months since we debuted our model and we started these update videos. For most of that time, we've projected a 50-50 Senate with Democrats retaining control, thanks to Vice President Kamala Harris. Now on election day, our final projection is 51-49 Senate with Republicans in the majority, a change. We still rate the battle for the Senate as a toss up, but in the closing weeks of the midterm, the GOP's fortunes have taken sort of a really crazy dramatic turn. It was just one month ago on October 8th that we gave the Democrats a 68% chance of keeping the majority. But in the last month, the pendulum has swung to the point where the GOP now has a 59% chance of being the majority. That's a 27% swing in favor of the Republicans. It's huge. And in that time, all the key races have moved significantly to the Republicans. The biggest shift of all in our final update for the campaign is Arizona, which is now rated as a toss up. For the entire time we've been running our model, Democrat incumbent Mark Kelly's seat has either been rated lean or for the most part likely Democrat. And at the last update through the race shifts into the toss up category. So Kelly's still strongly favored to win over Republican Blake Masters, but the surge in GOP chances mirrors all of the other key races this month. In Nevada, the race that has spent the most time this cycle in our toss-up category, it moved 9% in the GOP's favor in the last month. In Pennsylvania, the Fetterman-Oz debate was really a key turning point. So while the race tightened in the weeks leading up to the October 25th debate, since then, the race has gone from a four-point Fetterman lead to a 23-point lead for Republican Oz. In Georgia, Herschel Walker was an all-time low in our model on October 18th with just a 20% chance of victory. And today, he trails Democratic Senator Raphael and Warnick, but only by 6%, 52 to 48. In non-toss-up races, the same pattern has played out in New Hampshire, where Democratic Senator Maggie Hassan has seen her advantage in our model shrink from 60% to just 33% as the incumbent. It's really clear that in the final weeks of the campaigns, even where incumbent Democrats still have leads in our model, Republican challengers have made crazy strong inroads. Those races are as close as they have been our entire model. In the open North Carolina and Ohio states, Republican candidates are posting their best showings in bids to hold these seats for their party. And in Colorado and Washington, two states that were not on our radar for most of the cycle, Democrat incumbents still have strong leads, but they've seen drops in their probabilities in last month. One of them losing would be a major upset, but their struggles are really a sign of the overall erosion in the Democrats' fortunes in this closing month of the campaign. So let's move over to the House. In the House, we started with the GOP having a 90% chance of taking the majority. We saw a slow but consistent erosion of the GOP's probabilities, but it never dipped below 75%, and it's crept back up to our final projection of 80%. So while the GOP's lead never narrowed that much, the price of that erosion is the number of seats that they're projected to win. So at their height in the summer, the number was 240, and now now our final projection is down to 232, so the Democrats getting 203 seats. In our final projection, we have 22 toss-ups, plus 11 lean Democrat and 11 lean Republican. It's these 44 seats that will be the major battlegrounds today and determine not just which party controls the House of Representatives, but also, of course, the size of their majority. And remember, you know, for the last two years, the Democrats had to contend with a very small majority, and the GOP only needs to net out five seats tonight to take control. 
So that is going to do it for our DDHQ forecast model update and for 2022. I hope you've enjoyed these weekly looks at the state of the races for control of the House and the Senate. For all of the results and race calls tonight, be sure to join the DDHQ Inside Elections live stream here on YouTube. The link is in the description below. Things get started at 7 Eastern. I'm Dr. Liberty Vittert, Professor of Data Science. Thank you all so much for watching today and for all summer and fall long. See you soon.